This show, just like all the other StarCast shows, are available at adfreeshows.com. Okay, they uh, call them enhancement matches, and uh, it's something we've all been waiting to see. Uh, They needed to put somebody over, big time. They knew the man to go to. So let's get to it. We've been waiting for it. Folks, let's bring out Tom McGee. Tom, welcome. Great to see you. I know you guys haven't talked in a while. So have you grab a microphone there? Just pick it up. So, what have you been up to? <laughs> I think, Tom, though, what we need to do, though, is just give a little background because you were an incredible athlete before you arrived into wrestling. Tell us a little bit about your background before that. Yeah, I grew up doing sports and always really loved physical culture, and so uh, I competed in most individual sports and uh, uh, also a lot of team sports as well. And then before I came to wrestling, uh, I was already a world champion powerlifter and uh, um, also had won, I think, the best international strongman contest uh, world championships at the time, um, world record holder, and... Um, had just played some professional football also. Uh, so then I went into Stampede Wrestling, was how I, I got started. Yeah, with Stu. And so you had these, uh, I mean, you were an unbelievable athlete. It legitimately, not only did you have this great physique, but you, uh, we were used to seeing when you talk about strongmen, they look like Mark Henry. But you legitimately won these strongman competitions. Uh, had great uh, skills as a gymnast as well. What led you to wrestling? What led you to Stu Hart? So I was doing these other uh, athletic uh, and sports activities. And, um, you know, when you have, you develop these physical abilities, you're always looking for the best place to, um, to put yourself where you can make use of the skills that you've learned and the abilities that you've acquired. And I, what, what captured my imagination was I was watching the first WrestleMania. And I thought, wow, that looks really uh, great and interesting. And it, it really, as I say, it captured my imagination. And I thought, I can really see myself doing that. And I Im- imagined things I could be a part of in, in that. And so then um, um, I had my... Um, my manager contact the WWE, the WWF at the time. And, um, and from there, I made my way to Stampede Wrestling, where I uh, met Stu Hart, and I started to, uh, to um, on the journey to acquire the skills. Brett, do you remember your dad saying anything about this kid that he... Uh, yeah, I do. I only got, I would only see the Stampede Wrestlers because I was one of that, I was one of the crew there with those guys for so many years. But uh, once I got to WWF at that time, I was on the road like forever. I never, I never it seemed like I never got home. And when I did, I the uh, last thing I was going to go do was go hang around with the, the wrestlers and, the, and go to the wrestling show in Calgary. So I, I didn't really know everybody, and I didn't really um, like uh, I. I just wasn't fully informed of who everyone was and what they were doing. But there was a lot of really good wrestlers. My brother Owen was wrestling then, and Brian Pillman was wrestling for my dad then. And, and of course, uh, Tom was working. And, you know, to, just to, to look at Tom, just to see him in those days, and to hear the... My dad was always impressed by guys that were, you know, really strong or really good wrestlers. And, uh, you know, when you met Tom, you knew he was... Uh, you know, there was a possible superstar here that was going to really um could be a real asset to everybody because he he looked like um i'll say tom looked better than warrior did as far as body went yeah. but, which is Incredible. saying something and uh at the same time he was legitimately one of the world's strongest men and uh all the stuff that uh tom could do with the somersaults and backflips off the top what really happened for me was um owen I got Owen uh, finally, and Owen was really good too. Owen was, 
he was ready for primetime wrestling, I think, at that time. And a lot of people wouldn't have thought so, including Owen, maybe. But uh, I was uh, really eager to see Owen get down to WWE or WWF. And uh, Owen finally had his tryout that, um, that same day that Tom did. I, in fact, I didn't expect really? to see Tom. And then Owen showed up for a tryout. And um, <clears throat> so I, I, it was just a coincidence that Owen was there. But um, I, uh, when I found out, someone came up to me and said, yeah, you're wrestling. Uh, and I knew Tom had just started in Calgary. He had literally maybe a, how many, maybe a couple months experience. I, I want to think it was at least six months. Okay, so six months experience. And I remember I was tag team champion with Jim the Anvil Nightheart, and uh, uh, they came up to me and told me that uh, they needed needed me to work with uh, Tom McGee, and Tom McGee was going to go over. And I was like, "Really? Like this new guy that is just can't even wrestle is going to be is going to beat me on TV?" And and it's like I didn't refuse to do it. I just said. I want to talk to Vince about it and find out well, why am I doing this? Like, I, I, I thought I was in a higher position, and if you need someone to do a job or a job guy, there's, there's a whole bunch of them in the dress room that could be better suited than me. You know, I'm your tag team champion, and uh, then Vince said I, he, I think he was really smitten by uh, Tom, like really blown away by how he looked and what he. I think he saw a real superstar, like his, I think, I think he saw one of his future champions, like he had everything, Tom had everything, but just now it was a question of whether he could wrestle or not. And uh, I, um, when I talked to Vince, he said, I really want this guy, I want to see what this guy can do. And you're the only one that can bring out that kind of reaction from the crowd. And if he... If he wins, he's not going to get the right reaction if he loses. And then Vince promised me the match would never, ever be seen, ever. And ever. Another lie, but... Uh, Before um, we talk about what you, the conversation you two had, uh, you'd been to Japan, had some experience, not much. Did you feel you were ready for this? Well, I mean, from the, from the get-go when I started wrestling, I was looking to get into the WWE. That was my target. And um, so I think actually I had been in Stampede, and I might be wrong, but I think I had been up there training under your dad's, you know, watchful eye, but also um, with Bruce, and of course Owen was usually there as well. Um, maybe even for, it might have been a year. And I'm not sure if I'd been to Japan yet at that point, but... Um, what was the question again? Were you ready? I mean, oh, did was you think I ready? ready for this? this oh, was so, so then I got the opportunity to go in. Yeah. And so you've been already a professional athlete for a long time where you're, you're you know, out there to do whatever the sport is and to accomplish it. And so you're very focused and, you, you know, and you're ready. You have a can-do attitude. Yeah. And I have been trained by you know, these top um, people in the business. Yeah. So when I had the opportunity to go in there, First of all, it's very exciting, and when you're in Stampede Wrestling, there's a lot of people who were in there, they want to get up to that level, but their chances of getting there aren't that great. Yeah. But they're really all trying, and you get the feeling of how significant and important it was. Yeah. So I, did, I really, um, I took it very seriously, and I was very happy to be there, and grateful to be there. But once you get there, nothing can prepare you for it, because you show up there and there's thousands of people, and you've got all these bigger-than-life characters, including Vince McMahon, uh, and it's like in your presence, they be, they're like vignettes. You're walking through and all of a sudden, boom, there's this figure and then there's another one and then there's the people in authority and you can hear them talking like, let's put him with this person, let's put him with that one, and then you're shuttled off somewhere else. And it's just like sensory overload, what's going on. Kind it's so surreal. intense. Yeah. So uh, I want to hear what the conversation was before you went out there. Uh, folks are going to watch along with us. The WWE Network, it's 19 minutes and 40 seconds in for a second screen experience. Brett, what did you tell him before you guys went out there? Well, Vince kind of put it out to me that he wanted me to, to he wanted to see if uh, Tom could be his next superstar. He had and pretty much told me I have really big, high hopes for this guy and big plans for this guy. Mm -hmm. So I need to. 
I need to see what he can do. And like I said, that was at a time period when I wasn't, didn't have a lot of that recognition yet that I got as being the excellence of execution and being this guy that could have a match with anybody. And I remember it's like, I remember I looked at Vince and I stood up, I said, I, I said, I'll show you what kind of talent this guy's got. And I'll, I'll give you this guy, when it's done, you'll see what a good wrestler he is. And uh, I'll, I'll put him over and I'll give you, I'll show him in his best light where you go, okay, now I know what to do with this guy. So I remember I went, like I said, I was not too thrilled about jobbing out to a guy that was a, a, a I'll say a rookie or mm -hmm. even a, a guy that had little or no experience. And I felt I had, like I said, there was a lot of other guys that could have done that, I thought. But, but at the same time, the way Vince posed it to me, it was almost like a challenge. I need you to make this guy. I need you to. Right. So kind of like the documentary um, kind of says, it's kind of, it alludes to um, the hopeful making of one guy, which also ultimately turned into the making of myself. And right. uh, I don't disagree with that. I know that um, I went up to Tom and I said, Tom, we're working. You're going over. Um, give me your best three moves that you can do. Three things that you do really well. And he told me, I said, we're going to do a really simple match that's going to be just going to, I said, just trust me and follow me. And, and, and we, he gave me his three moves. I can't remember they are what they are. And you know, I haven't seen this documentary that we're, yeah. everyone's talking about, and I haven't seen the match. Yeah. Because it was stolen from my house by uh, the, the girl that was in the documentary stole it from my house and oh. never returned it. And so I was a little annoyed when I heard all this stuff about this Tom McGee match because it was stolen from my archives. And um, but when I went and saw Tom, I said you know, we talked about some of the moves he could do, and I said, well, we'll do that, and then we'll do that one. And one. I said we got so we had three good spots for. Tom to highlight his um, backflips and triple somersaults off the top turnbuckle and stuff. And uh, we kept it really simple, which is important to anyone that wants to become a wrestler, is that all art is simple. And the best wrestling doesn't need to be co so complicated and so choreographed that it never stops looking real. Yeah. Like nobody fights like ballet dancers. And uh, I don't know, I, I just remember going to Tom and I remember said, they got big plans for you, Tom. You need to just trust me and listen to me. And, he, and Tom did. He trusted me. We talked over the three moves that he thought would, he'd like to put in the match somewhere, and I, we figured out where to put them. And it wasn't even, I don't remember even talking too much about the match. It was pretty straightforward, and Tom had been in the ring enough times that he was pretty calm, and he, I think he trusted me, and uh, we went out and uh, had this match. All right, and... Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.